I am Joel Richardson, and this is The Underground. Welcome to this week's episode of The Underground, a program that explores the testimony of the biblical prophets, the gospel of Jesus Christ, current events, and how all of these things relate to you and me. So uh, once again, we had Reza on with us on a recent program, um, but Reza is with us again. Reza works in the underground church in the Middle East, uh, in the Farsi-speaking Persian world, in a few different nations, and um, last time he was on we talked about the protests, different things that are breaking out in Iran. I mean, this is really reaching a critical peak. Um, but in the midst of all of this, uh, the Lord is moving in a powerful way. And we're seeing not just people come to Christ, we're seeing disciples being made in the midst of this atmosphere of social upheaval and um, instability in Iran. And again, not just in Iran, but in Afghanistan. Um, spreading into Pakistan, Tajikistan, and in Kurdistan, and Iraq, and so forth. So the Lord's doing some great stuff. But I, um, we, you know, we did about a 45-minute uh, program last time. I wanted to sort of continue the conversation. So first of all, Reza, welcome to the Underground. Thank you so much, Joel. It's good to be back again. So one of the things I wanted to hit on is because this is a big deal. Um, we live in scary times. You know, I always sort of make the joke. I go, you know, here we are, 2018. I don't remember, honestly, the exact date, but I'm thinking it was about 15 years ago that I had a pager. I'm thinking it was about 15 years. Maybe it's now been 17, 18. I don't know. But it seemed like yesterday I had this thing, and it was called a pager. And so I would have it on my belt and, you know, driving around, and all of a sudden, wonk, wonk, this thing would buzz. I mean, it's just like that's a, such a strange concept. And my business partner and I, um, with our decorative painting company, we would drive to the nearest payphone, and we would call somebody, you know, to, to put in some quarters, and we would say, "What's your address?" We'd jot it down on a piece of paper. We'd make an appointment. We'd go visit with them, and you know, give bids and this sort of thing. Now we have computers. Everyone has computers in our back pockets. Now somebody just, you know, calls or texts, and within seconds, I'm, you know, well, I don't do it while driving, but I mean, you know, you just with your thumb, you're looking at their backyard, and you're like, oh, you know, they've got two chihuahuas in their backyard. And I mean, it's just technology is absolutely crazy. Okay, so we all know that, we're aware of that, and it's changing rapidly every day. But how does that affect the underground church in a nation where the government is terrified of them because they're afraid of the influence that they have over their people, right? Because the Iranian government is completely, the, the manner in which it has its clutches on the people is through its it's Islamic Shia narrative. They are the stewards of the Mahdi. And uh, they're the ones that are going to usher in this utopian Islamic revolution, again, under the Mahdi, the 12th Imam, and this sort of thing. So if the people don't believe that, then they lose power. Their power is entirely contingent upon this false religious narrative. So here is GCM, Global Catalytic Ministries. Um, obviously, there's other ministries working in Iran, but um, GCM's my favorite. And, uh, and it's also probably the most viral, I mean, in terms of just something that is just blowing up again and making disciples. Um, but I wanted to talk about Reza, about just the realities of technology, working in the underground church, because I mean, this is really where the rubber meets the road. One, you know, one bit of ignorance can literally get you killed, can get your loved ones caught and killed. So uh, first of all, let's just talk about some of the basic Without getting, before we even get into the technology, talk about just some of the basic precautions that you guys have to take on an everyday basis. Now again, this is difficult because people are interested in this. However, um, there's some things you can share, there's some things you can't, because you don't want to give away information, you don't want to project to the regime, but in terms of things that you can talk about, talk about just everyday life, the precautions that you guys have to take. Well, for example, when we gather together for our meetings, we change the location every time and we change the time every time. So just imagine how much coordination that takes, how much extra effort that takes. For example, 
When we gather together, we come in the houses two or three at a time every 20 minutes or so. So if there's a neighbor, if there's someone listening or watching, it looks very normal. You know, it's very cumbersome, it's very tedious to be the safety conscious, because they are after us. The Iranian regime, the Afghani government, even in Pakistan. As you know, these countries that are Islamic do not want people to follow Jesus because in their mind, we are a threat. Because in essence, we are saying that what they are and what they represent as some Islamic theocracy is a total lie. Yeah, and it's not even, this is the thing, is that the Christian movement doesn't even need, in fact, my understanding is that most of the church is not really, you know, it's not like they're aggressively part of the protests, the anti-government protests. They try to focus on the gospel. They're not primarily focused on overthrowing the regime. So the church doesn't even need to be anti-government. It's simply their, the fact that they live, the fact that they exist, the fact that they have an alternative belief system, that is a threat to the regime. There's another reality uh, that a lot of people don't understand about Iran is that for all intents and purposes, it's a giant mafia state. So, I mean, the government has set it up in such a way that, um, you know, if you rat out your neighbors, talking about, you know, having to have these low-profile meetings, if you rat out your neighbors, you hear your neighbors through the wall saying, praise God, you know, uh, hey, brothers, you know, they, whatever, Christian lingo, speaking Christianese, and they turn you in, whether it's for having a church meeting, whether it's for anything, then in a nation which is so poor, which where the people are struggling so much, the government is then going to give them the opportunity to have sort of a higher position in government, ratting other people out or whatever, and to then be financially secure. So the whole nation, you know, just like communism, lives in fear of one another. And the whole thing is structured in such a way that if you sell out your fellow citizens, um, and so this is, you know, creates that sort of situation where you never know who you can trust. And that actually affects who you share the gospel with on the street. How do you know? Just because this kid is a college student, how do you know the government's not paying him to be part of the secret police? That's right. It's always looking over our shoulder for a Judas. You are always asking if this new person might be a Judas who is trying to infiltrate. Is he looking to infiltrate? Or is she trying to infiltrate? But do you know what's nice? The nice thing is that we have the Holy Spirit. So when things happen, when arrests happen, we just call a fast and ask God to give us a new strategy. And of course, Joel, you know being so close to us, our strategies, they're very unique. And when you think about it, it is like only God could have led us in the way that he has. Because he is faithful, we are still going boldly in front of people. We do not discriminate. So we even now have secret police learning about Jesus. We have the Islamic militia who have come to Jesus. They are called the Basij, and some of them are learning about Jesus. We even have some Iranian revolutionary guards, very low-ranking hub, but they are learning about Jesus. Even in Afghanistan, where just recently, the Taliban killed over I think almost 200 girls in a girls' school, a bomber came and killed them. We have Taliban now who are coming to our meetings and coming to Jesus. In this situation, we always need to have a strategy that we can reach anyone anywhere, anytime. And we do. It doesn't matter if they're Taliban, if they're the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, or if they're a normal teacher in a school. We have to be able to reach them all, and in some people, like the IRGC or the Taliban, they could be the next Paul. You know my wife, she was a Saul, she loved persecuting the Christians. When there were martyrs inside of the country that she lived in, she was so happy. She would even go to the Christian neighborhood and she would say the Shahada over and over again. This is my wife, but then she found Jesus. She was so radical that she started her first house church that same day. So we have to take those risks because there are Pauls out there. But of course, we also have a strategy to be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So I, I should know this, but so the IRGC or SEPA, this is the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, Basij, is that the same thing as the secret police? No. So, we have something called the Ministry of Information. That's the secret police. Okay, in the mosque, if you show good interest, it doesn't even need to be a lot. They will invite you to become Islamic militia. Okay, that's Basij. In Lebanon, it's called Hezbollah, and Iran is called the Basij. Or even in Iraq, the People's Liberation Army, or the PMO, Oh, uh, popular mobilization units, the uh, Hashd al-Shabi. That's also called Basij. So in Iran, that would be the Basij. They have the authority to come out and stop the riots. During the Green Revolution, that's exactly how they quelched the riots. 
they brought out a siege with electric batons and they were brutal. So they crushed the riots. So we have the four different security apparatuses after us. We have the regular police, the secret police, the Islamic militia, and then the IRGC. Okay, so we talked about, um, we were talking a bit about technology, security, and these sort of things. So now let's talk a little bit about some of the technologically oriented security matters that you guys have to consider. So it's not just going out in the day to day, but you know, again, life nowadays, everything is technology. So everyone has a computer, everybody has a phone, and how you do life, relationships. So talk a little bit about some of the precautions that you have to take in terms of technology. Well, for example, Android phones are open source. So what that means is they can very easily put in malware and it can become a spy. The government can spy on you, and they do. One of my leaders had this happen to him. Every page he went on his phone or everything he opened, his phone would take a screenshot and send it to secret police. I cannot tell you how we know that. I can say how his phone was infected though. It's as simple as opening a text from an unknown number. That's all it takes. It's just like a virus on a computer if you open an unknown email. The Iranian government uses well-known companies, like Iran Cell, or you know like AT&T. So you think, oh, this is legit. This is AT&T. But the Iranian government is actually spoofing them and sending you a text with malware and when you open it up, now your phone is under their control. This is actually not uncommon. You mentioned something to me which just blew me away, is you said really any phone, this is including Apple, you name it, um, if the government has the right technology, they can track any phone in the world. Not just track it, they can uh, you know, sort of download your entire history. Is this like every text, every keystroke, everything that you do, they just have the entire history of it? No, no, they actually from the time you have your phone until the time when they look at it, they can actually see where you've gone. Oh, where you've traveled. Once they track your GPS locations, they can actually see who you're mingling with, because then they get other IDs. So this is something technically that any government in the world can do to any phone in the world, and it doesn't matter if it's an Apple or Samsung or Android. So, you know, obviously, um, you can't just keep everything in your head, so there's all sorts of issues like encryption and different things like that, and, um, I mean, are you guys just constantly having to, I won't say burner phones, I, I don't really want to give specifics away, mm -hmm. but, I mean, you're constantly having to sort of basically play 007. That's right. We're constantly changing equipment. I'd like to tell your audience about an opportunity we have to get some new equipment. It is very cutting-edge technology. It's actually smarter than the regime. It is more advanced than the controlling mechanisms that many governments have. GCM has its very own, shall we say, mad scientist. He is a believer and he's come up with something that's very revolutionary. We are only waiting on the funding. This is technology that literally will save lives because basically it masks who we are. Right, right. Yeah, and so I've, I've been in some of these meetings, and, and this is a blessing, by the way, is, you know, you've got folks who are, you know, former intelligence, whatever, and then they become Christians, or maybe they were Christians all along, or they're using their former skills, um, you know, in surveillance, in the government, whatever it may be, for the purpose of the gospel. And so um, we've been able to learn from and network with some of the most cutting-edge um, folks who have access to some of the most cutting edge technology and security protocols and so forth. However, um, some of the stuff and just you know normal stuff, even if it's not like cutting edge, it's expensive because mm -hmm. you've got leaders, you've got a network, you've got all of these precautions that you have to take. Um. And we're rotating devices. I mean, we can't keep the same devices. So that's a cost and that's why it makes what we do more expensive. Right, so there's all of these things I, uh, in looking at the the budget for GCM, just in terms of security each year, the annual budget's roughly 180000 Now, we won't give all the numbers in terms of the number of leaders, um, in terms of the equipment and how many folks that this is equipping, but, um, you know, doing gospel work in the the genuine underground persecuted church in some of these nations, it's it's costly. And so this particular project that you mentioned, you've got some equipment. Um, what's the total cost of that? We need $40,000 to produce this item. 
Okay. So this is just one way. Again, it's, you know, you have not because you ask not. It's worth throwing out there. Um, this is something that you can give to specifically, um, which is to sort of, you know, upgrade and really make sure that they're working with some of the best quality um, tools, uh, tools of the trade, so to speak. So there's the 40,000, you know, every little bit counts. On, on the other hand, if the Lord lays a large amount on you, this is a project that's kind of right in front of us. Um, so just wanted to present that to the body. Um, but beyond these sort of beyond this big, larger project, there's just sort of all of the day-to-day -day stuff. Another important project we have is for $800 a year for each disciple maker that will give them the tools of the trade. But we need that amount for each disciple maker yearly. This is part of our ongoing budget. That doesn't stop. Because unfortunately, the best way to stay off the grid and off the radar is actually to act normal. So we can't have like Nokia 6160 like those regular dumb phones. Everyone has a smartphone now and yet we can't buy smartphones inside the country because we don't know if they've been touched by the government. So for example, the Chinese government, products like Huawei will actually be discounted in the country like 50% because the Iranian government or the Afghan government has installed spyware on them. That's amazing. Even just right from, right from the manufacture of the product itself, hardware installed so that they can monitor their people. This is another thing. You know, I don't want to disparage companies, but like we were told that Samsung put a GPS tracking device on the battery. It was this transparent circuit board and it would communicate with the GPS device. So, when I was watching the riots back in 2009, it was said that Nokia helped the Iranian government find the protesters. The joke inside of Iran was Nokia connecting people. So we are dealing with this, we need to have phones, we need to have devices, we need to have laptops, but unfortunately it comes at a cost. Because the security issue are only getting worse and worse and worse. God has protected us, but we do need the tools of the trade. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, here in the United States, we're all upset because, you know, maybe if you're of a partic particular political bent, you know, maybe Facebook or Twitter, one of these things, or, you know, YouTube is going to ban your account or, um, you know, cut off your ability to receive payments, supporters through PayPal or Patreon or one of these. But it's a whole nother level when the technology companies are actually sort of working with, and we see this, you know, with China, with Facebook and all these different things, but these sort of technocrats, these these large companies that are actually working with dictator um, autocratic uh, regimes and governments, especially when those governments actually potentially want to put you in prison or kill you. I mean, it's really, this is really what it's coming down to. And, you know, again, this is just the nature of the world we live in now. Technology, we have the merging of multiple threads of technology, which when they all come together, there's just this quantum um, rise. Everything's changing so fast. Um, on the other hand, you've always got folks who are trying to stay one step ahead of it. And, you know, praise God that in the kingdom we have um, people who are on the cutting edge and who have the ability to stay one step ahead of it. But it's you know, as much as, you know, in, in most nations when you are working for the gospel laboring, you know, you're primarily focusing on things like, you know, linguistics and culture and language and, and all of these sort of things. But in certain parts of the world, it, it you know, and it's not, we're not trying to glorify it, but there really is sort of this 007 thing where technology and keeping abreast of what's developing from year to year, it's really a matter of life and death. We're all going to have a part in this, you know, the thing about I love you and even my wife always says this about you is that you're always looking to store up for yourself treasures in heaven. She remembers the time you said that to my leaders a few years back that still has impacted her to the point where she's like, okay, how do I figure out ways to store things in heaven? One day, Joel, you and I, and all the GCM team sponsors and partners, when Jesus says, my good and faithful servant, how well pleased I am with you, much of that will be because of partnering with what he was doing. This goes for the intercessors and the supporters. One day God is going to say because of your prayers you moved the heaven lies and protected this team of people. Yeah, and I have a special deal worked out with the Lord that because I'm appealing to you all, that I get a 1% return on everything that you give, he actually applies to my account. 
So even though I don't have the ability to give large amounts, I, I'm, I'm still trying to store up treasures for myself in heaven. So it's just a deal that we've got worked out. But um, no, seriously, so again, um, we mentioned it earlier, we have this very large project, which is sort of right in front of us, $40,000 to really upgrade all of this equipment. But Reza also mentioned earlier um, this, this um, figure of $800 per year, this is basically the cost to cover each of the primary disciple maker leaders in terms of the equipment and the technology that they need just on a daily basis. Again, we won't give the exact numbers of how many of these are out there, but again, it's growing um, because the movement is viral. And so just the nature of, I mean, when the gospel is spreading like this, the number of disciple makers is growing and spreading into different countries, but it's $800 um, per year, and that's going to cover all of the basic security right now, technology and so forth for each disciple maker. Um, but this just is, it's an ongoing, um, it's an ongoing need, it's just an ongoing part of, of sort of doing gospel work there. So I mentioned uh, in the last program we had Reza on, um, again, we've got the Global Catalytic Ministries app. Um, this is a great way just to be connected with GCM, to get regular prayer updates, to get testimony updates, just sort of any kind of update. So you can download it on your phone. Again, go to the iTunes App Store as well as the Google App Store. Type in Global Catalytic Ministries. Of course, and there is just the website, which we've mentioned before. We'll put that up on the screen, which is catalyticministries.com. And there's links there if you want to partner, different ways to donate. And again, so it's, it's always going to come down to these two things, prayer and financial support. So as I've said before, um, GCM is a ministry that I am tremendously blessed just to appeal to you on their behalf and say this is a ministry worthy of our prayer, worthy of our support, worthy of our partnership. So... Again, Razor, it's great to have you on with us again. Thank you so much, Joel. It's a special time inside of Iran. It is a Kairos moment. So the number one thing I want to ask for is prayer. If I could just ask that people would pray 1 John 8 over our lives, which is the chapter where the crowd comes to kill Jesus and Jesus disappears in the crowd. And the second thing is, that God will continue to give us grace and wisdom to understand how we can fully harness this awesome revival that's happening in the Middle East. Awesome, man. Well, it's always great visiting with you, and um, as always, we look forward to sort of the next update, some more testimonies, and just hear about all that God's doing. But um, we, we love you, and we love having you on, and we love to love being partnered with you. So that's all the time that we have for this program. Uh, as always, we thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, I'm Joel Richardson, and this is The Underground.